Hey Canucks fans, welcome to Clay's Canucks Commentary. It's Monday, September the 10th. I'm Clay Emo at Canuck Clay on Twitter. I'm at Clayton Emo on Instagram. And I'm a founding member of the GLCPC, the Good Looking Canucks Positivity Club. It's a rainy day here in Vancouver, but nothing can dampen the shine that came from the Young Stars over the weekend. See what I did there. Vancouver Canucks prospects beat the Winnipeg Jets prospects in two straight games, following up their 8-2 pummeling on Friday night with a 6-4 victory yesterday in a more competitive game, a closer game, yet the Vancouver Canucks still won. And yes, I get it's a prospects game, I get it's a pre preseason game, but still, as I mentioned in a previous video, it's nice to, after all this talk and projecting the prospects on paper, it's nice to see them on the ice together, and man, did they ever look good, especially on offense. The three players that really stood out after Game 2, the same as Game 1, Adam Gaudet, Elias Pettersson, Jonathan Dahlin. We know that Elias Pettersson is penciled in to start on the sec Canucks second line, likely as a center, maybe as a winger, but regardless, he'll be there. I think Adam Gaudet has an outside chance of making the team as a fourth line center, uh, but if he shows as well as he did over the weekend, it's going to be hard to keep him out of the lineup. And speaking of guys who showed well, the inter I think the most interesting case of the three, all three are interesting, is Jonathan Dahlin. My gut feeling, if I had to guess right now, despite how well he did over the weekend, is I think he's still going to start in Utica. There's no rush with this guy. Yes, the chemistry he showed with Pedersen is very tantalizing, but I think that's the first time I think I've used the word tantalizing in one of these blogs. But there's, I think there's no rush. And if he, he could likely be the first or second call up. So, you know, if the Canucks carry one or two extra forwards and then Dahlin's still starting in Utica, then that maybe that means makes him the, by math the second or third next option after the starting 12 on opening night so with injuries with guys not playing well whatever their case may be i definitely think you're going to see jonathan down up with the big club sometime this season whether it's a, for a quick five or ten game stint and then down whatever it may be but let's not get too excited we got a lot of time to talk about that um and the future is bright obviously not just for Pedersen, godet and the rest of the the canucks prospects but for jonathan Dolan as well do you guys remember when we got jonathan Dolan? we got him from the ottawa senators at the, at the February 2017 trade deadline. A trade deadline that you could say Jim, ben, Jim Benning did really well in. You know, especially coming off 2016 where he didn't move Rabada, he didn't move Ham Hughes. So I think there's a lot of pressure on Benning to do good moves. Last year was just okay. You know, he got, ended up getting Leipzig and Mott and Jokinen for Vanek and um, Philip Holmes. So especially, I guess, if, you know, no, was he? Oh, yeah. Jokin is gone. Mott will be depth in Utica. And if Brennan Leipzig can, can crack the top 12, then that's a good trade, you know, in giving up guys like Vanek, who wasn't going to stay, and, and in giving up a, a Phil Holm, who was never going to crack um, the Canucks lineup. So 2016 didn't do anything. 2018, not bad. But 2017 was outstanding. Basically made two moves, two big moves, two very similar moves. The day before the trade deadline, he traded Alex Burroughs to, uh, to Ottawa for Jonathan Dolan, which I'll talk to you about in a second. And then the very next day, he followed that up by trading Yannick Hansen to the San Jose Sharks for Nikolai Godobin. Godobin, another player trying to crack the roster for good this season. But I want to talk about this Dolan for Burroughs trade. At the time, I, I truly, I thought it was a really good trade for the Canucks. Because especially, like I said, after the, the non-activity of 2016, there was pressure on Benning to do something. Pressure on Benning to move out these ex, uh, expiring contracts, these older veterans, these players who were on the, the twilight of their careers and looking ahead to the future as part of the rebuild, obviously. And you can argue, especially what we saw the, over the weekend, that Jonathan Dolan will be a big part of our rebuild. So he shipped Alex Burroughs, longtime fan favorite, you know, heart and soul of the Canucks, as Jim Benning put it, to Ottawa for Jonathan Dolan. Dolan was selected 42nd overall in the 2016 draft. And you might remember the 2016 draft wasn't particularly strong for the Canucks. You had Ole Ulevi up top, obviously, in the first round, fifth overall. And then you had guys like... Cole Candela and Will Lockwood and other guys that are not sure if they're ever going to crack the lineup or, or or really be a mainstay with the Vancouver Canucks. So it was nice to get Jonathan Dolan, basically um, early to mid second round pick from Ottawa. A lot of guys pegged him top 25, others he fell off the board. But regardless, we got this guy. Um, he We knew he had chemistry with Pedersen. He played with him before. And then we know that he also had an outstanding season last year in his Swedish league. At the time, you know, it was it was a really shrewd move by Benning, and it showed that he understood what it takes to, to, to go with a rebuild. And we know the Alex Burroughs story. He went there. Alex Burroughs did well, got about 12 or 13 points in the last 20 games with Ottawa. 
that he got five points in 15 playoff games as Ottawa went all the way to the Eastern Conference Finals. But then Burroughs really struggled last year. Oh, yeah, I forgot to mention, Burroughs signed a two-year extension as soon as he got to Ottawa, the day after he got to Ottawa. And then in the first year of his extension, he did not do well, uh, played in 71 games, only had a few points, and was, you know, was certainly diminishing. And then the Ottawa Senators actually bought him out at the end of his first year, and then Alex Burroughs officially retired in July, and now he's going to coach for a, a, a Montreal's farm team. So that's the Burroughs story. So um, Jim Benning showed a lot of, I guess, uh, foresight in uh, and knowing that Burroughs was on the downside of his career and Burroughs was out of the league a year and a half later. Flip that towards Jonathan Dolan, where the sky's the limit for this guy. We saw it over the weekend. And that's why this trade, looking back at it, was so good for the Vancouver Canucks. I don't think even back then we knew how good it would be. But if Dolan cracks the lineup, whether it's this year or likely next year, when he has uh, chemistry with Pedersen, you know, we're going to start with this Sedin's comparison but to have two Swedish players who know each other well, who can play each other well, who can make excellent passes, excellent one-timers, give and goes, finishing off plays. Obviously, there is going to be natural um, comparisons to the Sedins, although that's probably not fair to Dahl and Patterson. That's probably undue pressure. I put a poll up on Twitter yesterday saying, at the time, be honest, Canucks fans, take a, a stroll down memory lane. Did you like the Dahl and for Burroughs trade at the time? And supposedly, 90, uh, 350 votes, 90% of you said, yes, you like the trade. 3% of you at the time said, no, you didn't like the trade. And well, that was an affinity and a loyalty to Burroughs. And 7% of you said you were indifferent at the time. And I got a, some really neat responses, especially people that admitting that they didn't, they didn't know a lot about Jonathan Dolan at the time. And they were seeing, you know, one of their favorite players go away. So in essence, all I want to say really today is maybe take a walk down memory lane with me, Canucks fans. And my question to you is, do you remember when Banning made that trade, Burroughs for Dolan? Do you remember your emotions that you felt? Were you sad to see Burroughs go, likely? Did you did you know anything about Jonathan Dolan, the young prospect coming here? And now that you've seen him play in the over the weekend, how excited are you? And how quickly do you think Dolan will, will make his way into the lineup? I guess there's two questions there, really. It's when do you want him to be in the lineup? The question is probably right away. Uh, the answer is probably right away. And more real, realistic question is when do you think he'll be in the lineup, given the glut of forwards and given his youth and the fact that he can go up and down without having to go through waivers. So obviously a lot of things to consider when it comes to making the final roster for the Canucks for opening night. All right, Canucks fans, leave a comment below. Answer any of those questions about the trade, about Burroughs, and especially about Dowling going forward. Subscribe to this channel if you haven't done so already. By the way, if you leave a comment, I always like to read, react, and reply if, if it makes sense and if I can. Uh, yeah, subscribe to this channel already. Thank you for pushing me over to the 3,000 subscriber mark yesterday. I don't like to make a big deal about those kind of things, but it's certainly a nice affirmation for what I'm doing. So I appreciate your loyalty and your support and your feedback as always. Give this video a like if you like this video as well, and have a great day, despite the rain, wherever you are. God bless, and go Canucks go.